this video, I chat with Dream Team 3 Adjusting Academy CEO, Alicia Lofton, about how a career in claims can change your life, starting now. You're watching Adjuster TV, adjusters first. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Kaplik. Learn all about E&O and other insurance for adjusters at cplic.net slash adjuster TV and by Adjuster TV Plus. Get unlimited access to a growing library of the best adjuster training videos created by the most trusted name in claims, Adjuster TV at adjustertvplus.com. Talk to me about um, your trainings and, and what you guys have going on in the sneaker ball. Is that what is that? The, I don't know what a sneaker ball is, so I, I, I'm, I'm interested to know kind of what you have going on. Okay, well, my name is Alicia. I am the CEO of Dream Team 3 Adjusting Academy based here in Dallas, Texas. I started my journey okay. as an independent adjuster in 2017, and my passion is to teach. And so in 2019, your uh, Dream Team 3 Adjust Academy was born. And um, I've been on a crusade to get more minorities into this field because this field can change your life because the show has changed my life. And sure. I just thought we wanted to do something different. We, we were deployed. We've been working from home for the last two years. And I know that in, in just in Texas alone, there are a lot of adjusters in Texas. And so yes. I wanted to, I, first of all, I am a DJ. I love to entertain. I love music. I love to dance. And uh, I actually went to a sneaker ball in my hometown two years ago. And I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I was like, oh, that would be awesome if we can have something like this for adjusters so it's a formal ball where you wear your formal gowns you wear your suits and your tucks and you get to bring out your finest tennis shoes to go with that outfit <laughs> nice very nice that's cool so talk to me a little bit about your your journey so you said you started doing claims in 2017 was that like hurricane harvey time like you do you do were you out in the field doing stuff so this what happened i was working for cigna for about 10 years and they decided to outsource to india and prior to that my cousin had been pushing me get your license get your adjuster license i was like no i'm gonna retire from cigna and then harvey <laughs> hit and then on august 30th then 30 days later the layoff came so I was like, okay, I'm going to get my license now. I thought I was going to get to work, Harvey. I had no clue about emergency licenses at the time. I even drove sure. my application to Austin, Texas, thinking it was going to get pushed through real quick, right? Because that's where TDI sure. is located. Well, I sat and I waited, I waited, I called, and they were like, your license is not a priority because they were processing TWIA claims. I had no clue what that was at the time. And so I did not get my license in my hand until February 9th, 2018. Oh, man. So, yeah, so I didn't get to work Harvey. So I started preparing myself for whatever was coming next. So nothing hardly came for tornado hail season. And then here comes Hurricane Florence. And that was my first hurricane. Nice, nice. And so so you so you were out in the field doing property claims? Florence, that hit, didn't that hit over like uh, Carolinas? That is, is right? correct. That is correct. Yeah. And I myself wanted to start in office before I actually go anywhere in the field. So I accepted a, a deployment in urban Texas uh, with Renfro, okay. working State Farm total loss auto claims. Okay, cool, very cool. And so when you were at Cigna, was is that like a health? That's a health insurance company, right? That is correct. So I processed doc, uh, disability claims for uh, about the first three or four years of my career. I wanted something more challenging, so I went to appeals. So at that point, everybody had already been denied once, twice or three times, had an attorney. 
and I did appeals for about another three or four years. And then I ended my career uh, processing contracts for new business and renewing contracts for existing business. Okay, so so you have kind of a long, sort of a, a pretty long career in insurance already before you sort of moved over to doing like field property or field auto, that, right? Or auto, is- yeah. Well, that's that's really cool. So talk to me a little bit about your your training and sort of what you guys, what your superpower is as far as like what you train and how you train it. Okay, so uh, it's very unique how I even got into this. So actually on my first deployment, the lady behind me saw how fast I picked up on learning the process and started helping our team. And she was like, have you ever decide, uh, thought about teaching the pre-licensing class for Texas? I said, nope, never crossed my mind. So I looked into it, um, thought it was gonna be an easy ordeal, thought that they would give you everything and approve you to teach, but it does not work that way. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like a, a teacher at a school. You have to create your own curriculum, your own outline, your own exam, and then present it to them, and they'll decide if, you know, to give you the green light or no, you need to go back and change this, fix that. So it was six months going back and forth. I had almost given up, and then I was actually stranded and uh, do, after doing a training with CRU at the airport, when I received the notification that it's finally been approved. And so, but I didn't nice. start off, um, immediately teaching because again, I was still working on my career as an independent adjuster. So been teaching the, uh, the Texas online pre-licensing course. And, okay. uh, and that's the first class. And then here recently, I wanted to get into the continuing education course. I noticed that most adjusters who do not have all of their CE credits uh, for Texas completed when it's time to renew, the main class they were missing were ethics. So that's the first (laughs) class that I got approved was the ethics course. So that one's been approved, had a couple of those, and I'm still working on adding more of the e-courses. I know resumes matter when we need to submit these to the firm. Um, Just a little bit of my background. I have a bachelor's from Oklahoma State in business management, and I have a MBA from University of Phoenix. So I know I have a business background, resume background, so I do offer resume services to tailor these resumes to what these firms are looking for. In addition to that, when I took my class, I had no clue what to do next. All we did was get a list of firms and that was it. I'm like, what do I do now? And so I went to do research, tried the Facebook groups, didn't really get any help, called a couple of firms, got the steps, Created, you're just a home girl. That's where she was born. So started nice. her group and brought all the lost sheep to that group. And I led them on, this is what we need to do next. Because I really am passionate about helping people and helping them be successful in this career. Sure. And so yeah. not just teaching them what the state says they need to know to pass the exam. I actually prepare them for the real world of what the firms are looking for. You leave my class knowing what certifications, what do you do after you get your fingerprints done, how CERCON and NIPR work, uh, how to go about getting your continuing education, what firms offer what certifications, what firms give newbie adjusters a chance versus those who have experience. And then I also offer a mentoring program. So in this program, my mentees get to have one-on-one Zoom calls with me. I check on their progress, what they need to work on next. Then I ask them, what are their short-term and long-term goals? And we create SMART goals with action plans. And then we revisit that uh, every few weeks in the beginning to see where they're at. And then usually by the time they get deployed, they kind of like to slack off because they're they're working so hard. So I kind of push it off to like every quarter. We will follow up and see where we're at in their career. 
very nice, very nice. So I, I think you're doing like incredible work because and, uh, truthfully, and I, I've had, I actually had a phone call today with somebody from a firm. Um, they're desperate for people. They, they're looking for not just warm bodies, which is what, you know, sometimes happens, I guess, especially, you know, around like the, the peak of hurricane season, but they're, they're desperate for people who have the drive to want to be successful as an adjuster, um, who are willing to really knuckle down and do like the hard work. And it's hard work, some of it. I mean, and it's, it's not, it's not that it's like complicated or like, you know, hard to understand necessarily. There's just a lot of it, right? There's a lot of things, pieces that go to a claim. And like you said, like for, for the, what's the next step, right? So, all right, so I got my license now, what do I do? Well, now I get, so, so our resume. So what do I need to put on my resume? So like step by step by step, I think that we need so much more of that. And I applaud you for, for putting this together um, and, you know, I, I think that, you know, you could say that, well, people have like, you know, people are going to go out like for me, like I spent 20 years as an adjuster before I did any like formal training of anybody. But it was in there. You know, I just wanted to go like kind of chase the storms first. Um, but if you've already got, you know, you've got a, a great foundation in, in claims and doing the disability and the liability and the the negotiations and all that stuff, being on the phone and talking about claims and do you want this? I can't give you that. You know, so that's like the, the core of everything that we do, even on the cat property side on a hail claim, right? So you've got, you know, many years of experience doing that and you're choosing to, to kind of, you know, you've, you've seen a, a need in the industry uh, for people who are the lost sheep, like you said, who are like, you know, you want to gather them all up and kind of like, this is the way we go. You know, this is a great career. We want you to be successful. Here's how you do it. Um, I'm, I'm super happy for you. And I'm, I'm super glad that you're doing this. And I want to try to help out in any way that I can. Um, so talk uh, maybe a little bit about um, what your training, like more from a more of a practical standpoint, kind of what that looks like and how can people get involved with your training? Okay. So with uh, the training, so for example, I've done customer service. That is a big deal. Empathy is a big deal in this industry. Oh, I learned this sure. in uh, teaching my class. And, you know, a lot of people don't even know what empathy is or even know what to say. Because sometimes we're just lost for words. You know, I told them when I'm working, I said, get your Kleenex ready, whether you're in the field or you're sitting at home at a desk because you're going to cry. I'm a big cry baby because yeah. I'm a cancer. And after I get all of that out, I still have to be able to say something. So, you know, I do little exercises teaching how to empathize and what's the difference between empathy and sympathy. And, you know, just teaching them not to take it personal because you're going to get those phone calls and they're not going to be pleasant. But, you know, just teaching them how to get through that. You know, you, you know, I have to get them to realize some of these people have PTSD from the previous hurricanes that they've been yeah. through, they've heard a loss and, you know, you know, we may empathize, you know, trying to, you know, some, we really don't know what it's like to be in some of their shoes because we've never been through a hurricane. Right. Yeah. And so it's, it, you know, it's important to take the time to actively listen to them and just let them know that you're there to, you're there to help them get through this. They're not alone. Okay, so I teach yeah. you know, customer service. Um, I teach the little bit I know about Exactimate because my whole career I've done pretty much auto. I've had one uh, property deployment on the from remote for Hurricane East Is because I have my New York license, by the way. And I got that call nice. at 11.30 p.m. <laughs> to get the oh, yeah. yeah, and so... Uh, teaching uh kind of get people prepared for what for taking uh the new york and you know hawaii based on my experience as well as you know in my auto background there are a lot of people that ask me about you know what is it like to go in the field and i'm big on training i will get in my car and go train all over the world and i i, I do just that and, and i'm able to bring back 
you know, what I learned and then try to encourage them, you know, to go do the same thing. Because I'm like, okay, you take the, you know, I get calls all the time. Should I take this deployment? Say it's a field deployment. And I'm like, okay, tell me this. When you get to the home, what is the first thing you're going to do? I don't know. I don't know if you should take that. <laughs> you got to know that, you know, exactly what you have to do to get there. When you get there, you need to know what a test square is. You know, R&I yeah. versus R&R, that's very, you need to know what a gutter is. You know, you need to know all of this. And I'm like, I learned this from going to multiple property boot camps with Pilot, with Renfro. I've been to Flood Claims College. I've been everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Um, yeah, that, 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 that empathy piece is so, so huge. And you're right. And in, in most cases, you know, as adjusters, we're not going to have like have had our house blown down or burned down or had severe damage to it. Uh, but especially the more experience we get, the more we can kind of uh, the easier it is to sort of recognize um, that what people r really, really want in most of those cases is just to be heard. Right. So I ask a couple of sh very small questions, you know. Um, and then let them talk, right? Because people are going to want to tell you about their experience. They're going to want to tell you, you know, and and everything that they say is um, it's important, right? It, it's they're they're kind of explaining their experience, and you may be able to pick up clues about how to move forward with the claim um, and having these chats with them. And the, I think the biggest thing, and this is just in general, and you know this, but it's I, I found that if if I um, especially after I had kind of a lot of experience, started to be able to anticipate what the, the things that were going to trigger phone calls later, right, that they were like worried about, or they were going to call their agent and be mad because they didn't, I just didn't, I didn't say like a three or six word sentence in my little spiel, right? You know, and, and one of those sentences is, and hey, listen, you know, we're going over the estimate. Uh, you know, if you get a contractor out here and he takes a look at this and, and he's, uh, he finds other damage or if he thinks it's going to be more than this, call me back. That, that kills so many phone calls because people are like, well, this is what the adjuster gave me. How am I supposed to be able to do it with that? I don't know what depreciation is because he didn't, exp I, you know, they're just going to give me 1500 bucks and the claim was $15,000 and da, 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 right? Right. It's, it puts you, and this is this is the, the key to empathy, and it doesn't. You don't have to have had your house burned down or get you know f flooded up to the rafters to know that all you, if if you have uncertainty as as a person about what the next step is or what's going to happen or how long it's going to take to happen, then that's when the anxiety like cranks up, right? And that's when people, when you have anxiety and you're like, well, if I got to do something, and so you start doing things that cause the whole thing to spin out, right? And I don't want any of my, my insureds ever to have any anxiety. Or at the minimum, I don't want to be a source of anxiety by not fully explaining things. While I'm still at the house, I may not have to write up the estimate at the house. I mean, I do, but you don't have to to do this. Go over the, the claims process before you leave. And it takes three to, to five minutes, right? And then ask, answer a couple questions. And then, I, listen, you got my number. If something else comes up, you think of something, to, you know, after dinner tonight, give me a call. Good to go, right? That's all you got to do. And that, because so much of the time that we, you know, and I'm kind of getting off in the weeds a little bit because this is like, I'm passionate about this this piece yeah, in particular. Go ahead. <laughs> but we spend so much, yeah, we spend so much time on the phone already. Right. That why generate more phone calls for ourselves by having our insurers out there not knowing what's going on and starting to get frustrated and mad. But let's oh, I talk to my neighbor and he said, you know, my adjuster, they shouldn't have done that. His adjuster did it this way and it's different. And now he's calling his agent and then it's everybody's everybody's phone's ringing. Right. Your manager's phone's ringing. Your manager's manager's phone's yeah. ringing. And it's just what all you have to do is just put yourself in the shoes of that person. What are they expecting? Well, what am I going to get paid? How much are you going to make? Going to get paid? How much is going to come out of my pocket? How long is it going to take? To answer those four questions, and you know, you, you, you the exactimate skills, the construction stuff, all the rest of that stuff will come. You have that first piece nailed down. Even if you don't know any, this is just general advice for adjusters, right? New new adjusters. If you if you're uncertain and you don't know all the things, or you don't think you do, just 
think about the basics of the claims process and what that the homeowner's going to need to know for the next step because that keeps your phone from ringing and it gives you breathing room it gives you space to, to all right well i, I got to jump into ecs or i got to get into to navigator or i got to get into file track or i got to get into this this thing or exact analysis whatever it is and figure out how to put the reserves in and figure out how to put the, this in and do that and the other thing uh, but at least my phone is not going to be exploding it's not going to be catching on fire in the corner of the room because it's you know it's People are leaving voicemails on top of voicemails. Um, so, uh, talk to me a little bit about the uh, about the sneaker ball. When is that, and uh, how can people kind of get involved with it? Okay, so the sneaker ball will be Saturday, February twenty fifth, twenty twenty three, at the Hilton, um, okay. located in Rockwall, Texas, which is on Ray Hubbard Lake. Beautiful, beautiful hotel. I just I love that hotel. I've been since day one. So okay, I'm like, what to do it here. So it'll be from 7 p.m. to midnight. Um, we will have a link available in a few months where you're able to book a room at, at a discounted rate. And uh, the tickets are okay. 150, you know, plus the taxes. And um, so, and this event is a private event and we want to keep this, you know, we, within just adjusters. And uh, of course you can bring sure. your, your plus one or your significant other. And your food, uh, your ticket does include uh, dinner as well. And uh, we have live entertainment. So we will have Mars Hill Band joining us as well. They're nice. one of the greatest party bands ever. And when I say they make sure they touch all generations and all cultures, they do just that. I think I could have picked a better band. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. Nice. They're, they're awesome, and uh, it's far. And then when they take their lovely break, um, I get to put my DJ hat on. So I will be. I was going to ask you, are you going to get up there and DJ? That will be me. And I'm, I'm pretty sad nice. too. I've, I've been DJing, like doing house parties since, actually since I was a kid. But you know, back then we had tapes, there was some tapes, the CDs, and I was making CDs <laughs> yep. for parties. And, then I finally decided, actually on one of my, my, actually my second deployment, I said, you know what? I'm going to give me a turntable and I'm gonna find me a DJ school. I never knew if they existed. And I found two in DFW and I put myself in school and I priced everything and went and got all my equipment and went to school. And now I know how to entertain you on my turntable. So I'm gonna Nice. Do and my DJ name is DJ918, and 918 is the area code of Tulsa, Oklahoma, which is where I was born. Okay. Right? Very nice. That's you know, and that's something that's. I don't I don't talk about it very much, but like, as an independent adjuster, you know, you're able to like, kind of, sort of like. It gives you the resources to kind of do the things that you and time, right? To do the things that you've always kind of like had like as a hobby on the side. So like I've been playing the guitar since I was nine years old, and in 2011, I said, you know what? I'm gonna take a break from claims, and it, and it was just for like starting it like in the fall. So it wasn't like I took like a whole year off or anything. But I I put myself into a guitar program, um, and. That's all I did for several months was just like just head first into this guitar program. And, you know, because you, you, you can kind of build your own schedule and you can, you know, you can afford like I really, really want that guitar. But, man, I don't know how in the world I'd be able to afford that without saving up for, for several years to a big commercial group, you know, and suddenly I have the money to pay for that guitar. Right. And pay for this this school and pay for you know apartment in L.A. for four months or whatever it was. Um, and just take a break and just, you know, go do something that stimulates you. And it's, it's, it's a reward. You're paying yourself back for all of the hard work that you, that you do helping other people as an adjuster. Um, and it's one of my favorite things about it is that, um, you know, it's that sort of like lifestyle that you can kind of craft your own lifestyle, right? Right. I love it. Uh, I love, I'm a great cook, awesome cook. 2010, I started Oklahoma Style Catering by myself out of a Ford 500, and it was just so much work. I was like, I, I felt like I failed, but I just felt like it wasn't the right time. 
So I put it on the back yeah. burner for years. And then when I became an adjuster, I started to put that money to that five and invest in that business. So, and that's what I love about it. This, you know, being an adjuster allows you to make that money to live your dreams, to fund your dreams without getting a loan. I have witnessed yeah. people build houses from the ground up that were struggling when they first got into these. I heard so many stories of people, you know, coming to take my class, you know, and just to know where they come from and where they are today. I've even had some students that were homeless, living in their vehicle, about to get yeah. Now They have a house built from the ground up. I mean, that that right there is how heartwarming to me to know that I was a part of changing that person's life. That means the most to me in this career. Yeah, yeah. It's a great career. and I think it's, you know, I've been doing it for a long time, and, and it's... I could go off and do other things, but I, I still am here. I'm still like, you know, pushing this career, helping people be successful in this career, helping people understand what it is, helping them understand if it's even right for them or not, which I think is pr a pretty big deal. Um, helping the, you know, I have a lot of relationships with people at the IA firms, helping them accomplish their goals to get the right kind of people to show up and the people who they're going to show up to show up and, you know, help get these deployments because the work is there. I mean, and it's not like it's, it's crazy, but people are like, well, you know, the industry is saturated. It is not saturated no, at it's all. Not. It's not even <laughs> close. It may be saturated with tire kickers and looky loos who pop in and, and like they maybe they get their license and they don't do anything with it. But the people that are serious about it, who keep right. pushing step by step, who take your training, who are like, all right, what's the next step? Let's do that. All right, what's the next step? Let's do that. Those are the people that are, are building the house from the ground up when 18 months ago they were homeless, living in their car. And they're paying cash for the house. They're, you know, they're cash flowing it. They're right. buying a sailboat. And, you know, I mean, it's like things that they always wanted to do, but they some life spun them out one way or the other. And, you know, but then they got, in a, in a way, and I don't know if this is, if, if like, if if women like kind of feel the same way but for guys like we'll get mad at it right like i'll just like you start to, you're like there's no reason for me to not be doing good in this so you, you use that sort of like you know sort of frustration and anger at yourself to like push to that next step and all right i gotta i'm gonna have to stay up till one o'clock in the morning doing this let's do it right because you get mad at it um <laughs> but it just it takes that it takes that little extra grit and that persistence and that drive coupled with the empathy the the willingness to be to serve right to serve the industry to serve people and to put everybody else's needs before yourself and that's the way that the best adjusters i think are becoming the most successful yes and i and i want to thank you as well when i first started out you were a part of my google search and I've been following you ever since. When my adjusters are finished with me, they get like a little newbie packet that I put together. And you best to know, Matt's name right is right there with his link. I need you to follow this guy right here because he helped me get to where I am today. So thank you for that. <laughs> oh, yeah, no problem. It's, it's my pleasure. And I'm glad that you were able to... to to find stuff and in, in, I've got a lot of videos and I don't know how if all of them are helpful, but I'm glad that you found the helpful ones. Um, but yeah, so all right, so do you have a, a you have a website to send, we can send people to? I do. So my website is youradjusterhomegirl.com. You can also find of my Facebook page under Dream Team Three Adjusting Academy. You're just a home girl is where you can find me on Instagram. You can also find me on TikTok and learn some, some cool little videos and information from me on You're Just a Home Girl, the number two. If you ever need to reach Dream Team 3 Adjusting Academy, you can reach us at 833-DT3-TEAM. So that's 833-383-8326. And any of us would be able to assist you. Very nice, friends. Well, thank you, Alicia, so much for being here. Alicia Lofton, um, such a pleasure to get a chance to talk to you. And uh, I wish you the best with your endeavors. And, and you know, we'll, uh, you're now going to be on Adjuster TV. So 
You're going to be part of That Guy Matt's videos. <laughs> Thank you so much for having <laughs> I really do appreciate it. You bet. What's up, Adjuster? Are you brand new to claims? Have you had people tell you that you've got to learn how to use Xactimate to do hurricane, hail, tornado, wildfire, wind, or water claims on houses and businesses? Well, they're absolutely right. You must know Xactimate X1 to be able to work for most companies in our industry and to give your new high paying career its best chance. Adjuster TV has put together a comprehensive Xactimate training that takes you from how to download and install Xactimate to building sketch diagrams, documenting your file, how to import and label photos, and so much more. And it's all done with signature Adjuster TV style. No frills, everything you need, and nothing you don't. And not only that, it's not gonna cost you an arm and a leg because it's included as part of your Adjuster TV Plus membership. You're not gonna have to travel to take this training in person. You can do it at your own pace, and you'll be able to rewatch the trainings whenever you need a refresher for as long as you're a member. If you've never used Xactimate before, then you need this complete step-by-step -step training exclusively inside of Adjuster TV Plus. Join now at adjustertv.com slash x1. Do not show up to a job interview at an IA firm without Xactimate X1 installed on your system and you not knowing how to use it. Access this training and dozens of hours of other independent property claims training video series right now at adjustertv.com slash X1.